Welcome back to our channel, The Fortunates. And if you are new here, please subscribe to this channel. So today in this video, we will discuss about the Nusselt number. So this dimensionless number is basically used in heat transfer calculations. So if you look at the first equation where the Nusselt number is a ratio of the convective heat transfer to the conductive heat transfer. And it is also equal to HL by K where H is the convective heat transfer coefficient, L is the characteristic length and K is the thermal conductivity of the fluid. So it means that the Nusselt number is dependent on two parameters. First, the type of fluid you are, they are dealing with and second is the surrounding. What I mean from surrounding is that where the fluid is flowing. For example, is it on the flat surface or is it flowing a, through a tube or is it flowing across a sphere? So it's dependent on the type of fluid and the surrounding. So if you will compare the Nusselt number with the Prandtl number, the one basic difference you will see is that the Prandtl number is not dependent on the surrounding, whereas Nusselt number is dependent on the surrounding. We also define Nusselt number as a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number also, which we will see further. So here are some relations of the Nusselt number with the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. And we, have and we have distributed them on the basis of the surrounding conditions. For example, when the fluid is flowing on the flat plate, then what is happening when it's going through a pipe and finally it's flowing across a sphere. So in the case of flat plate, on the basis whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, we have different relations. And if you talk about the pipe flow, within the laminar flow, we have two conditions. One, where the surface temperature is constant, at that time the salt number is 3.66. And in the second case, when the heat flux is constant across the same surface, the Nusselt number is 4.36. And if we talk about the turbulent condition, there are two well-known equations. One is the dittus boulter equation, where we use the relation with this specific relation on the basis whether the fluid is being heated up or is it being cooled down. And second is the second well-known equation is the cider tartar correlation. If we come to the sphere, we have this relation where it's, there is a constant term added to the common relation which is equal to 2. So let's say if you look at this equation and we say that the conditions are stagnant. What I mean is that fluid is stagnant which means that the Reynolds number is equal to 0. Even then the Nusselt number is 2 which means the convective heat transfer is still dominating over the conductive heat transfer even when the fluid is not flowing. So what it means is that, that there is a natural convection phenomena is happening there. So after going through the formula and the relations related to the conditions like where the fluid is flowing, whether it's flowing on the flat surface or in the pipe or across a sphere, we concluded that the Nusselt number helps to explain two, three parameters. First, to know whether the convective heat transfer is dominating or the conductive heat transfer is dominating. Second, which factors are influencing the conditions or we say the values of the Nusselt number. So let's say considering the same fluid dynamic condition, if you will flow that fluid once on the flat surface and once in the tube, the Nusselt number will be different. So after having both the values, you can explain that which parameters influences the conditions. On that basis, you can tune the parameters also. And last one where we can use the Nusselt number is to calculate the heat transfer coefficient, which we significantly use in the heat transfer cases. Overall, the conclusion is that the Nusselt number is used to explain whether, whether the convective heat transfer is dominating, conductive heat transfer is dominating, to find out the factors that are influencing the convective or the conductive heat transfer and finally to calculate the heat transfer coefficient. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I am signing off. See you soon in the next video.